we we need to I think we can fit a few chairs up here at the altar amen how many of y'all know God is good praise God amen Luke chapter 5 verses 18 through 20 Luke chapter 5 verses 18 through 20 we are starting a new series it is called the gift giving series and today is part one You don't have a Bible, we have the scripture up here behind me. Some men arrived carrying a paraplegic on a stretcher. They were looking for a way to get into the house, and the house being the temple where Jesus was preaching, and set before him, set before him in, in front of Jesus. When they couldn't find a way in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof removed some tiles, tore the roof off, and led him down in the middle of everyone right in front of Jesus. Uh, the title of today's message is Come Out of Your Comfort Zone. Come out of your comfort zone. Touch two people and tell them, come out of your comfort zone. Look at the person behind you. Tell them, come out of your comfort zone. Look at the person that smells like tamales and coffee and buñuelos and tell them, come out of your comfort zone. If you have your children next to you, say, come out in the name of Jesus. Demon, come out. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, for real, Pastor, for real, name prayer. Come out of your comfort zone. In high school, I believe it was my freshman year, and I think it was... Cousin Margaret, that just dropped me off from school. I arrived at my house to a very scary scene. My grandma was sitting on the floor with her gown torn next to her bed. She was sitting on the floor, and at that time I did not know, but she had had a series of small strokes uh, that rendered her legs uh, useless. Interestingly, uh, she, had, she was drinking a cup of Kool-Aid while she was on the floor. How she managed to tear her gown and fall down but not spill her Kool-Aid is another sermon. Amen. But all things are possible through Christ, including holding a glass of Kool-Aid while you're falling. So here I am, this small, skinny teenager, and I have to get uncomfortable because I've never picked, off, picked up anybody off the ground much less my grandma. So I got to figure out a way how I'm going to pick her up off the ground and put her on the bed. So I devised a plan. I'm going to put my arms under her arms and bear hug her. And I'm going to stand up and then spin around with her and then gently lay her on the bed. So I picked her up. And I got up. And she was heavier than what I thought she was. I was like, Lord Jesus, why couldn't you bless me with a small grandma, petite grandma? That'd have blessed me with a grandma that's thick as a brick. <laughs> Booty and everything. <laughs> so I attempted a spin, and I did half a spin. And she, she fell on top of me on her bed. You can only imagine the sight of a 14-year-old kid with his grandma on top of him on the bed. She's on top of me and she looks at me straight in the eyes, tells me, sin vergüenza. I'm like, Grandma, you need to live life seeing them tacos so I can spin you around, girl. So I was like, okay, I need to overcome this obstacle. She's on top of me, looks weird. I'm gonna have to, eventually, I overcame the obstacle. And, and found a way to carry her over gently and lay her on the bed and then also get her covered. And I like to say that is a metaphor for what God is saying today to this church to elevate. And that is when we are comfortable in our faith and we do not reach out to somebody who does not know God, we leave them laying on the floor of their unbelief. 
We leave them laying on the floor of their brokenness and their hurt. But when we come out of our comfort zone, we will carry and cover them to a place, to this place, to where they can receive Jesus and be healed. And I want to encourage you here today to come out of your comfort zone. Come out of your comfort zone. There are, there are family and friends that are laying on the floor of unbelief and God is looking to you. God has placed the responsibility, the duty on us to carry and cover them to a place to where they can hear about Jesus and receive Jesus. There will be obstacles you will have to conquer, but how many of y'all know all things are possible through him? Amen. Including drinking a cup of Kool-Aid and falling down, but still have it in your hand. So I want to give you three keys here, and I encourage you to take notes. Three keys on how we can come out of our comfort zone. And the first key is we must carry the weight of responsibility. We must carry the weight of responsibility. In our text, they were some men, some friends that realized it was their duty to carry this paralyzed man to a place to where he could receive Jesus and get healed and get his sins forgiven. He got salvation. It was their duty. They took responsibility for it. They acted on it. And they carried him. And for all we know, this man could have been 300 pounds. For all we know, they could have walked two miles carrying this paralyzed man to the place where God could heal him. The Bible says that his, he was paralyzed because of sin in his life. Something he did in his life caused him to be paralyzed. But they saw it as their responsibility. We're not going to leave this guy in this condition. We're not just going to feel bad about it and just turn a, a blind eye. We're going to do something about it. We're going to carry him. And the Bible says that the power of God was present for Jesus to save and to heal. How many of y'all know the power of God is present here today to save and to heal? So... They, they, they took responsibility. And I want to tell you, especially you parents, for the people that are living underneath your roof, it is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to carry the weight of bringing your kids to a place to where they can hear about God and learn about God. It is, it is that weight of responsibility that you must be willing to carry. And can I say that sometimes the best things we could do to win others to Christ is not what we say, it's what we do. Because your kids will follow your actions way before they take your advice. And if soccer practice is mandatory, but church is optional. If going to school is mandatory, but coming to God's house is optional. If going to bingo night and hanging around with all your old friends is mandatory but coming to God's house is optional how many of y'all know they're gonna follow your actions not your advice and they're not if they don't see that God's house is a priority in your I'm not saying that just because of that they're gonna do it but but we have to lead by example you are the leaders of your home what is a leadership what does a leader do they influence for the good or bad and parents, I want to encourage you, influence them to God. Let them see you serve God. Let them see you seek God. Let them see in your life that God's house is a priority over soccer, over sports, over bingo, if, you, if you're over 60. <laughs> and can I also say, that it is every believer under this roof, actually this principle is universal, whether it's just church or the church down the street or a church on the north side or the west side or the universal church. If you call yourself a believer, all of us have the responsibility of growing God's church. All of us. All of us have that responsibility. It's a weight that we must carry. Growing up as a kid, my mom would line me up against the wall in my room. And if I grew an inch or two inches, 
she would mark with the wall with a pen. Obviously, I didn't grow very tall, so we don't have many marks on the wall. But she would mark it every time I would grow. And, and every time the check mark went higher and higher, it was an indication that my body was maturing physically. But I want to tell you, you maturing spiritually is not a matter of how long you've been serving God. The check mark that God puts on the wall of your faith is, are you growing my kingdom? Are you winning souls? Are you serving? Are you supporting the church to where I have brought you to? Are you giving, are you giving a Christ-like example to the kids that look to your leadership? Maturity does not come by age. Getting older does. Maturity comes when you take responsibility for every area in your life. How many sons of God do we have here? Raise your hand. Make some noise. Raise your hand. Make some noise. I'm looking at you. How many daughters of Christ do we have in here? Come on. Raise your hand. Make some noise. Our responsibility as sons and daughters. See, Jesus said, go ye. He didn't say, go ye people with a title in a church. He didn't say, go ye only men. He didn't say, go ye those with a seminary degree. He didn't say, ye, go ye those who stand up on a stage and sing, or go ye only those who stand up on a stage and preach. He says, go ye everybody and make disciples. Win, bring the lost to the cross. It is our responsibility to grow this church. And if you've come to church, I don't know if you've ever been to another church before, but in this church, we're going to push and I'm going to challenge you to win souls. We not only must carry, but we must cover. Touch two people and tell them we must cover. There were two groups of people in that crowded building that, that day. There was the Pharisees where if you study the Bible, they were known for being very condemning. They exposed people's sins. In fact, these were the people that Jesus was constantly bumping heads with. He was always bumping heads because Jesus even told them, you look like you got it all together on the outside, but in the inside you're dead, you have no love. Because if you really love me, it's not just about loving God, it's about loving people. And how many of y'all know we can know all the scriptures and we can worship God, but how many of y'all know that should translate into reaching out and loving those who do not have God? Loving those who are hurting. But, but, but you had them that exposed people's sins, that condemned people, that made people feel that they were unworthy of God's love. But then you had the guys carrying the guy on the stretcher. These guys were all about covering this guy's sin. The Bible says he was paralyzed because of sin in his life. The Bible don't say why he got paralyzed. I mean, he could have been dancing at the club and he got paralyzed. Or, I mean, he must have been dancing hard. <laughs> or maybe he was racing, but they didn't have cars back then. They had donkeys or horses. So maybe they were racing for pink slips. My donkey for your donkey if I win the race. That's okay. That one lady in the back got the joke, okay? But nevertheless, they did not tell people why he was like this. They did not expose him or gossip about why he was in the situation that he was in. They covered him. What they were worried about is keeping him courage. I know you're paralyzed, Jaime, but we're going to get you in front of Jesus, and Jesus is going to heal you. I know you had some sins, and you messed up, Jaime, but don't just, just wait. We're going to get you right in front of Jesus. Whatever we got to do, you're going to get your healing. You're going to get forgiven, Jaime. Uh, 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 why are you carrying this paralyzed guy? What sins did he commit? None of your business. It's all good in the hood. All, all you got to know is that you're about to see Jesus do something in this place. See, but when you're a condemning church, you gossip about other people. When you're a condemning church, you are not welcoming or loving to, towards people who come here whose lifestyles and values contradict the scripture. The Bible says that sinners love to be around Jesus. How do you expect to win people if you're never around people who think different than you and live different than you and believe different than you? How many of y'all know we ought to be like Jesus and people ought to love being around us? 
And not because you're out there, Frank the Tank, and, and, and shaking it like a, a salt shaker. It's because we show them something different than what they're used to seeing. We're not showing them darkness. We're showing them the light. We're not showing them division. We're showing them unity. We're, not, we're showing them the power. We're showing them resilience. We're showing them endurance. We ought to cover, not condemn. And if you're here at Elevate, I, I challenge you not to be that condemning person. Let's be the church that covers. Why are you hanging around with so-and-so? Why are they coming back to church? None of your business. Oh, can we start a prayer chain? You can pray for yourself. Pray for your mama too. She has an ugly look in her face. And your daddy. We're going to cover them. With encouragement, we're going to cover them with prayer. We're going to cover them with mercy. We're going to cover them with patience. We're going to cover them with following up. How many people in your life right now that you've known that have gone astray, but you haven't followed up with them, checked up on them, encouraged them? Hey, where you been at? Hey, let's see you at church. Hey, let's, let's go out and have some lunch. And, 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 and you are holding them accountable. You are you're following up with them because how many of y'all know God covered us in fact the greatest example the greatest cover the first the OG of covering was God in the beginning of time when Adam and Eve messed everything up in a perfect environment God went looking for them and the Bible says that they were exposed they were ashamed of their nakedness and when God found them he did not condemn them although they thought he was going to condemn he was going to destroy them Although he, they, they thought that God was not going to forgive them, but when God found them, the Bible says that he covered their nakedness and forgave them and showed them mercy and gave them grace. How many of you here are like that, that when God found you, you were naked in unbelief, you were naked in hopelessness, naked in darkness, naked in, 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 in brokenness, but yet when God found you, he did not condemn you, he did not destroy you, he forgave you, he encouraged you, he covered you with mercy and grace and forgiveness and the power of the resurrection. And be, too much is given, much should be expected because mercy has been received. We should reciprocate mercy to others because forgiveness has been received. We should reciprocate forgiveness to others because grace has been reciprocated to us we ought to give grace to those that are hurting amen if God covered us how many of y'all know we ought to be covering other people not condemning them we ought to carry and cover and the last one is we have to conquer obstacles when you make a choice I promise you when you make a choice to get uncomfortable uh, to get out of your comfort zone and your faith to carry and to cover the loss to this church, the broken to this church, you are going to face obstacles. There are going to be obstacles. They had obstacles. They could not even get into the church where Jesus was preaching. There was too many people. There was too many hurting people. So they had to climb the roof and start tearing away at the roof. I mean, you can only imagine Jesus preaching and, and them on top of the roof. I mean, Jesus is there, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> Chihuahua? <laughs> Where was I, guys? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to hip. <laughs> Bam! Paralyzed man falls through the roof. But the Bible says that Jesus was impressed with the paralyzed man. He was impressed with his friend's faith. And how many of y'all want to be a church that impresses Jesus with our faith, with our soul winning? But they had some obstacles. They had to rip through that roof, kick the roof in, punch the roof out, rip out tiles. So that their friend, we're just going to call him Jaime because we're on the south side. So that Jaime could get through the roof. And some of you are going to have to rip through the roof of the fear of rejection. And oh my God, I don't want to talk about Jesus because what if they say no? What if they say no? What if they say yes? 
If they reject you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the Jesus who sent you. It is not your responsibility to dictate their choice. What it is our responsibility is to give them Jesus. So whether they say yes or whether they say no, your hands are clean. At least you did and said what you could do. And God will honor you and bless you because of that. You, you, you're going to have to rip through the roof of time. I don't want to wait. I want my husband to come to church already. You just told him about God yesterday. <laughs> just came to church today. I want all my, my neighborhood saved immediately, regardless. It makes sense regardless. But you gotta, it's going to take time. Don't think that just because you said a couple of scriptures and were a good husband or a good wife or good parents, that, it, that immediately you're going to be able, they're going to give you the right to carry them and influence them to a place where Jesus can save them and empower them. It's going to take time. Now, I'm not saying that it can't happen overnight because Jesus is above time. What, what took years, God can do in months. What took months, God can do in weeks. What took weeks, God can do in days. What took days, God can do in hours. What took hours, God can do in minutes. What took minutes, God can do right now. I'm saying that it, it, some things that, if I could preach, I would say that right now, God wants to set somebody free from pornography. If I could preach, I would say right now, somebody, God wants to set somebody free from alcoholism. If I could preach, I would say so right now, God wants to set somebody free from depression. If I could preach, I would say right now is a good time to give your life to Jesus Christ. If I could preach, I would say right now, God wants to heal you from your sickness. If I could preach, I would say right now, God wants to restore your marriage. If I could preach, I would say not next year, not next Next week, not tomorrow, but today is the day of your salvation. Today, God wants to do something. But I'm not preaching about that. But still, God can do that today. If you are willing, God is willing. But it's going to take time. You know, it took me a, a, a minute at the age of 19 to say yes to Jesus and invite him into my life. And... It's been 18 years later, and I'm still standing, devil. I'm still here, and I'm still wow. serving God. But what took seconds or minutes was possible because of years of sowing and sowing by my mom and by my family. Them sowing, and, and you could ask them, I reject it. I've called Jesus every name in the book. Thank God for forgiveness. <laughs> I've called church people every name in the book, but, it, but in spite of how bad I was, they kept sowing, sowing. In spite of how, how dark things got, my mom kept believing and praying. And, and in spite of how much I said I will never serve God, well, look what happened. You, you can honestly see right now, my mom kept believing and declaring and, 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 and what, what, see that. That, that person may have preached a sermon, but it, the reason why they were able to bear, the Bible says one water, one souls, and one reaps the fruit. He was reaping uh, years of, of, of ladies and family members and uncles and my grandma and sowing into my life that one day God is going to change you. And how many of y'all know, thank God that I made that choice. But what I'm trying to tell you is that if you have a husband that keeps rejecting Christ, keep ripping away at the roof. If you have daughters and sons that don't want nothing to do with God, mama, daddy, keep ripping away at the roof. If you got a family that don't want nothing to do with God, keep ripping away at the roof. If you got friends that you love and you care for, guess what I want to say? Keep ripping away at the roof. Because Galatians says, if you do not quit, you shall reap what you have sown. And at the appointed time, you're going to see that spouse. You're going to see those kids. How many of y'all want to see your spouse, your friends, your family come to Jesus? That you clap like you might believe in Jesus. I said, how many of you want to see your spouse, your kids, your family, your dog, your goldfish, your pet ferret come to Jesus? How many of y'all want everybody to come to Jesus, but God is looking to you. God is looking to elevate. 
God is looking for a church. Jesus was impressed by their faith, not by the paralyzed man's faith. And because of the character of Jesus, I believe that Jesus also bless, bless you. <laughs> See, we just blessed her right now, amen. <laughs> I believe he bless his friends that brought him into that church, that tore the roof. Because that's just in the character of Jesus. I, Robert... Chewy, I know you brought Jaime. And, and, and Robert, I know you're believing for Jaime to walk again. And, and that's all cool. And I'm going to do that. And you're going to see how God's going to change his life. And I'm going to forgive him. But Robert, I know that you don't have a job. And though you didn't ask me for this, I'm going to bless you with a new job. Mark, I know you help carry Jaime, and Jaime weighs a lot, and Jaime's a pain in the butt. But Mark, I know you got some family. I know you're at, you're, you've been fasting and believing uh, for Jaime to get saved, and we're about to save uh, James in a little bit. But, but, but Mark, I know you got some friends and family members that are sick, and I, I'm going to heal those friends and family that are sick. I, I know you got some friends and family members that got cancer. I'm going to heal that cancer. God told Solomon, ask God for wisdom, and, and God said, I'm going to give you wisdom. See, Solomon wanted wisdom so he could glorify and, and, and lead his kingdom in a way that would, be, uh, that would glorify God in such a way. And God said, I'm going to give you that, but I'm going to give you things you didn't even ask for. He said, I'm going to give you power. He said, I'm going to give you influence. I'm going to give you promotion. And I want to tell you here today that God is not just going to bless the ones we carry in here. But God is going to bless the carriers. God is not just going to give a miracle to those who have been covered, but he's going to give a miracle to the coverers. He is not just going to give a blessing to those who have been conquered by sin, but he's going to bless those that have been ripping away and ripping away and ripping away and ripping away at the roof. That will not happen until you come out of your comfort zone and say, God, I am willing to carry and to cover and to conquer the obstacles so that my friends, my family, so that strangers can come to a place to where they can hear about Christ and be healed and be empowered. Little did I know that that day was the first of many because my grandma would really never get her walking abilities back. And in fact, even this girl up here that was singing eventually joined in on the fun and we would carry my grandma from the wheelchair and put her in the bed and carry her from the bed to the wheelchair and from the wheelchair to the, the sit down shower. And when I, was, when I was small, I don't know about Debbie, but I was always embarrassed tell people that I would carry my grandma like that and in fact I'd always tell my mom mom don't call me to carry grandma in front of my friends I'm supposed to be a thug <laughs> and they're gonna think I'm a thug if I'm carrying Wella with her and her glass of Kool-Aid to the bed <laughs> my mom my friends will get there on purpose Ale come get your grandma <laughs> And I used to be so embarrassed. But in retrospect, I wear it as a badge of honor. Because it builds character. And it teaches you that this whole life, living life, is not just living for you, but it's about living for others and helping others. And maybe you're here today. And maybe you've been embarrassed or fearful to carry others to the place where God, where they can hear about God. Maybe you've been fear. It sounds funny, but I've heard people say, I don't want to get sold out for Jesus because then, because then the devil will come against me. I've heard it. 
Every time I start serving God, it gets bad. I want to tell you if stuff has been getting worse because you've been serving God, you're doing the right thing at the right time with the right place. After every great storm comes a great calm. After every great crisis comes a great blessing. After every great brokenness comes a great healing. I want to tell you, mama, don't stop reaching out to those children. I want to tell you, parents, don't stop reaching out to those children. Don't stop.